Comprehensive Sex Education is a sex education instruction method based on curriculum that aims to give students the knowledge, attitudes, skills and values to make appropriate and healthy choices in their sexual lives. The intention is that this understanding will prevent students from contracting sexually transmitted infections in the future, including HIV and HPV. CSE is also designed with the intention of reducing teenage and unwanted pregnancies, as well as lowering rates of domestic and sexual violence, thus contributing to a healthier society, both physically and mentally. Comprehensive sex education ultimately promotes sexual abstinence as the safest sexual choice for young people. However, CSE curriculums and teachers are still committed to teaching students about topics connected to future sexual activity, such as age of consent, safe sex, contraception such as, birth control, abortion, and use of condoms. This also includes discussions which promote safe behaviors, such as communicating with partners and seeking testing for sexually transmitted infections. Additionally, comprehensive sex education curricula may include discussions surrounding pregnancy outcomes such as parenting, adoption, and abortion. The most widely agreed benefit of using comprehensive sex education over abstinence-only sex education is that CSE acknowledges the student population will be sexually active in their future. By acknowledging this, CSE can encourage students to plan ahead to make the healthiest possible sexual decisions. This ideology of arming students to most successfully survive their future sexual experiences underlies the majority of topics within CSE, including condoms, contraception, and refusal skills. <laughs> <laughs> Benefits of CSE Studies have found that comprehensive sex education is more effective than receiving no instruction and or those who receive abstinence-only instruction. Acknowledging that people may engage in premarital sex rather than ignoring it which abstinence only is often criticized for allows educators to give the students the necessary information to safely navigate their future sexual lives. CSE advocates argue that promoting abstinence without accompanied information regarding safe sex practices is a disregard of reality, and is ultimately putting the student at risk. For example, programs funded under AEGP are reviewed for compliance with the eight standards listed below in Abstinence Education Grant Program AGEP requirements, but are not screened for medical accuracy. Therefore, critics believe that students under these educational programs are put at a disadvantage because it prevents them from making informed choices about their sexual health. Additionally, under these AEGP programs, health educators have referred to those that engage in sex, especially females, as dirty and used. Quote, they have also used phrases such as stay like a new toothbrush, wrapped up and unused, and chewed up gum to teach abstinence. Under a CSE model, language would be more sensitive. There is clear evidence that CSE has a positive impact on sexual and reproductive health (SRH), notably in contributing to reducing STIs, HIV, and unintended pregnancy. Sexuality education does not hasten sexual activity but has a positive impact on safer sexual behaviors and can delay sexual debut. A 2014 review of school-based sexuality education programs has demonstrated increased HIV knowledge, increased self-efficacy related to condom use and refusing sex, increased contraception and condom use, a reduced number of sexual partners and later initiation of first sexual intercourse. A Cochrane review of 41 randomized controlled trials in Europe, the United States, Nigeria and Mexico also confirmed that CSE prevents unintended adolescent pregnancies. CSE is very beneficial in regards to teen pregnancy because studies show that teen pregnancy and childbearing have a significant negative impact on high school success and completion, as well as future job prospects. A study in Kenya, involving more than 6,000 students who had received sexuality education led to delayed sexual initiation, and increased condom use among those who were sexually active once these students reached secondary school compared to more than 6,000 students who did not receive sexuality education. 
CSE also reduces the frequency of sex and the number of partners which in turn also reduces the rates of sexually transmitted infections. UNAIDS and the African Union have recognized CSE's impact on increasing condom use, voluntary HIV testing and reducing pregnancy among adolescent girls and have included comprehensive, age-appropriate sexuality education as one of the key recommendations to fast-track the HIV response and end the AIDS epidemic among young women and girls in Africa. As the field of sexuality education develops, there is increasing focus on addressing gender, power relations and human rights in order to improve the impact on SRH outcomes. Integrating content on gender and rights makes sexuality education even more effective. A review of 22 curriculum-based sexuality education programs found that 80% of programs that addressed gender or power relations were associated with a significant decrease in pregnancy, childbearing or STIs. These programs were five times as effective as those programs that did not address gender or power. CSE empowers young people to reflect critically on their environment and behaviors, and promotes gender equality and equitable social norms, which are important contributing factors for improving health outcomes, including HIV infection rates. The impact of CSE also increases when delivered together with efforts to expand access to a full range of high-quality, youth-friendly services and commodities, particularly in relation to contraceptive choice. A global review of evidence in the education sector also found that teaching sexuality education builds confidence, a necessary skill for delaying the age that young people first engage in sexual intercourse, and for using contraception, including condoms. CSE has a demonstrated impact on improving knowledge, self-esteem, changing attitudes, gender and social norms, and building self-efficacy. Criticism of CSE How comprehensive is CSE? While CSE implementation is on the rise in the United States, it remains difficult for state officials to regulate what is and is not taught in the classroom. This is due in large part to the undefinability of CSE. CSE has the potential to comprise such a wide range of sexual information, and overall focus varies widely between curriculums. Educators have also accused CSE as fundamentally operating as a form of abstinence plus due to the reality that CSE often involves minimal body-related information and excessive promotions of abstinence. So-called comprehensive sex ed, says Sharon Lamb, a professor at the University of Massachusetts Boston, has been made less comprehensive as curricula are revised to meet current federal, state, and local requirements. Topic. LGBTQIA plus community not included CSE The term, comprehensive, is also often misleading because some comprehensive programs do not show the holistic picture of human sexuality. LGBTQIA plus advocates have long been critical of the ways in which comprehensive sex education generally promotes marriage as the end goal for students. Even when curriculums claim to be inclusive of LGBT experiences, they often promote heteronormative lifestyles as normal. Inclusion of LGBT identities and health topics is necessary for LGBTQIA plus students to feel safe and seen in their sex ed classrooms. When these students do not have access to or an interest in marriage they are practically erased from the CSE narrative. A cross-sectional study done in New York City analyzed the sexual behaviors of high school girls. Studies found that, "...high school girls who identified as LGBTQIA plus were more likely to report substance use such as, alcohol, marijuana, cocaine, heroin, meth, ecstasy and prescription drugs. They also had higher rates of contemplating and or attempting suicide." 
Another study found that the LGBTQIA youth accesses health information online five times more than the heterosexual population, and these rates are even higher for LGBTQIA youth that identify as a person of color, which stems from the fact that they lack health resources. In fact, as of May 2018, only 12 states require discussion of sexual orientation, and of these, only nine states require that discussion of sexual orientation be inclusive. Additionally, several states have passed legislation that bans teachers from discussing gay and transgender issues, such as sexual health and HIV, AIDS awareness, in a positive light. Furthermore, three states require that teachers only portray LGBTQIA plus people in a negative light. In a Canada, a federal report showed that LGBTQIA plus community has less access to health services and faces more comprehensive health challenges compared to the general population. As a result of lack of support for the LGBTQIA plus population, the Comprehensive Health Education Workers project emerged in October 2014. Their goal is to educate the LGBTQIA plus community about topics such as sexual and gender identity, sexually transmitted infections STIs, healthy social relationships, and depression. They do this through workshops, arts-based projects, and one-on-one -on -one meetings. Topic. Whose role is it to deliver sexual education? Many people regard health education as a moral or religious issue, and therefore should be taught not in schools. Before the late 1800s, delivering sex education in the United States and Canada was primarily seen as a parent's responsibility. Today, programs under the Sexuality Information and Education Council of the United States SIECUS begin comprehensive sex education in pre-kindergarten, which many people believe is not age appropriate. Many of those in favor of abstinence-only education, usually fear any type of sexual education that encourages sexual behavior at a young age. <laughs> Is it necessary? Although CSE is seen as the polar opposite of abstinence-only education, some critics believe that they are very similar. They both aim at preventing STIs and teen pregnancy. The only way in which they differ is through their primary goal. Abstinence-only education aims at reducing premarital sex while comprehensive sex education acknowledges that premarital sex may happen and therefore seeks to reduce the unintended consequences of premarital sex through education. Studies in developing counties surrounding sex education have also shown that comprehensive sex education is not needed. General education, such as literacy skills, was seen to delay sexual initiation and reduce the likelihood of pregnancy. Therefore, some people believe general education is of more importance. <laughs> <laughs> Federal funding for sexual education Although there is no federal mandate that requires states to teach sexual education, there is federal funding available to assist with sexual education programs. <laughs> Abstinence Education Grant Program AGEP. Historically, funding for abstinence education has always been favored over CSE. In 1996, during Bill Clinton's presidency, legislation was passed to promote abstinence in education programs. Under Title V Section 510 of the Social Security Act, the Abstinence Education Grant Program AGEP, was passed. AEGP has always been renewed before its expiration date, and each time funds gradually increase from $50 million per year to 75 and as high as $6.75 million per state grant in 2015. The way the funds are dispersed are based on the proportion of low-income children in each state. So far, 36 states have been given AEGP funds. Topic. Abstinence Education Grant Program requirements 
Part of Section 510B of Title V of the Social Security Act, contains the AH guidelines, which are the eight criteria that programs must abide by order to be eligible to receive federal funding. They are as follows. A. Has as its exclusive purpose teaching the social, psychological, and health gains to be realized by abstaining from sexual activity. B. Teaches abstinence from sexual activity outside marriage as the expected standard for all school-age children. C. Teaches that abstinence from sexual activity is the only certain way to avoid out-of-wedlock pregnancy, sexually transmitted diseases, and other associated health problems. D. Teaches that a mutually faithful, monogamous relationship in the context of marriage is the expected standard of sexual activity. E. Teaches that sexual activity outside the context of marriage is likely to have harmful psychological and physical effects. F. Teaches that bearing children out of wedlock is likely to have harmful consequences for the child, the child's parents, and society. G. Teaches young people how to reject sexual advances and how alcohol and drug use increase vulnerability to sexual advances, and H. Teaches the importance of attaining self-sufficiency before engaging in sexual activity. In addition to abiding by these eight conditions, AGEP-compliant programs cannot discuss contraception, STIs, or methods for protecting against STIs, except only when describing failure rates. Topic. Teen Pregnancy Prevention Program TPP. More recently legislation has pushed for funding that goes beyond abstinence-only education. In 2010, President Obama introduced the Teen Pregnancy Prevention Program TPP, which provides a total of $114.5 million annually to sex education programs that are medically accurate and age-appropriate. TPP falls under a subsection of United States Department of Health and Human Services, HHS, which is overseen by the Office of Adolescent Health. Funding for TPP is dispersed if they emulate specific evidence-based programs promulgated under TPP. Topic. California Comprehensive Sexual Health and HIV, AIDS Prevention Education Act In January 2016, the California Healthy Youth Act, amended the California Comprehensive Sexual Health and HIV, AIDS Prevention Education Act, to include minority groups and expand health education. Before it authorized schools to provide comprehensive sex education and required that all materials are made accessible to students with a variety of needs. It also focused solely on marital relationships. It now mandates that schools provide comprehensive sex education and states that materials cannot be biased and must be appropriate for students of all races, genders, sexual orientations, and ethnic and cultural backgrounds, as well as those with disabilities and English language learners. Additionally, education must now include instruction about forming healthy and respectful committed relationships, regardless if marital status. Furthermore, it is now required to have discussions about all FDA-approved contraceptive methods in preventing pregnancy, including the morning after pill, in conclusion now requires that all sex education programs promulgated in the state should Normalize sexuality as part of human development Ensure people receive integrated, comprehensive, accurate, and unbiased sexual health and HIV prevention and instruction, and Provide pupils with the knowledge and skills to have healthy, positive, and safe relationships. Topic. CSE as a human right 
Some critics state that young people's access to CSE is grounded in internationally recognized human rights, which require governments to guarantee the overall protection of health, well-being and dignity, as per the Universal Declaration on Human Rights, and specifically to guarantee the provision of unbiased, scientifically accurate sexuality education. These rights are protected by internationally ratified treaties, and lack of access to sexual and reproductive health SRH education remains a barrier to complying with the obligations to ensure the rights to life, health, non-discrimination and information, a view that has been supported by the statements of the Committee on the Rights of the Child, the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women CEDAW Committee, and the Committee on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights. The commitment of individual states to realizing these rights has been reaffirmed by the international community, in particular the Commission on Population and Development CPD, which which, in its resolutions 2009-12 and 2012-13 called on governments to provide young people with comprehensive education on human sexuality, SRH and gender equality. Other analysis show that comprehensive sex education is not an international right nor a human right because it not clearly stated in either a treaty nor custom. By international law, states are required to provide access to information and education about reproductive health, but this does not require a sex education curriculum. It may take different forms such as mandating that local school districts create a system for providing information to students, or mandating that health clinics and practitioners dispense information to patients. CSE in curricula Topic CSE teaching methods As CSE gains momentum and interest at international, regional and national levels, governments are increasingly putting in place measures to scale up the delivery of some form of life skills-based sexuality education, as well as seeking guidance on best practice, particularly regarding placement within the school curriculum. Sexuality education may be delivered as a standalone subject or integrated across relevant subjects within the school curricula. These options have direct implications for implementation, including teacher training, the ease of evaluating and revising curricula, the likelihood of curricula being delivered, and the methods through which it is delivered. Within countries, choices about implementing integrated or standalone sexuality education are typically linked to national policies and overall organization of the curricula. The evidence base on the effectiveness of standalone versus integrated sexuality education programming is still limited. However, there are discernible differences for policy makers to consider when deciding the position of CSE within the curriculum. As a standalone subject, sexuality education is set apart from the rest of the curriculum, whether on its own or within a broader standalone health and life skills curriculum. This makes it more vulnerable to potentially being sacrificed due to time and budget constraints, since school curricula are typically overcrowded. However, a standalone curriculum also presents opportunities for specialized teacher training pathways, and the use of non formal teaching methodologies that aim to build learners' critical thinking skills. The pedagogical approaches promoted through sexuality education, such as learner-centered methodologies, development of skills and values, group learning and peer engagement, are increasingly being recognized as transformative approaches that impact on learning and education more widely. As a standalone subject, it is also significantly easier to monitor, which is crucial in terms of evaluating the effectiveness of programming, and revising curricula where it is not delivering the desired learning outcomes. When sexuality education is integrated or infused, it is mainstreamed across a number of subject areas, such as biology, social studies, home economics or religious studies. While this model may reduce pressure on an overcrowded curriculum, it is difficult to monitor or evaluate, and may limit teaching methodologies to traditional approaches. <laughs> CSE terminology Apart from the different teaching methods, terminology also differs. Abortion, homosexuality, abstinence have connotations and definitions that vary state. For example, the word abstinence 
may refer to disengaging from all forms of sexual activities until marriage or may refer to only disengaging from sexual intercourse. Furthermore, the degree of sexual activity that abstinence connotates is often unclear, because sexual behavior that is not sexual intercourse may or may not be included in its definition. As a result, students are left confused about what activities are risky and teachers do not know what they can and cannot teach. The term comprehensive is also falls on spectrum, therefore can be considered an umbrella term. CSE means something radical for some institutions while it can mean something moderate and even conservative for others. According to the Sexuality Information and Education Council of the United States SIECUS, the guidelines for comprehensive sexuality education are as follows, appropriate to the age, developmental level, and cultural background of students, respects the diversity of values and beliefs represented in the community, complements and augments the sexuality education children receive from their families, religious and community groups, and healthcare professionals, teaches not only about abstinence, but also contraception, including emergency contraception and reproductive choice, teaches about lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender LGBT issues and questions issues, teaches anatomy, development, puberty, and relationships, teaches all of the other issues one would expect to be covered in a traditional sexuality education class, and should be science-based and medically accurate. Topic. Sexual education exemption Just as teaching methods and curricula vary by state, excusal from sex education also varies by state. States may have with an opt-out or opt-in produce. In some states, students can opt out of receiving sexual education without specifying a particular reason. In other states, students can only opt out for religious or moral reasons. In an opt-in provision, parents must actively agree to allow their children to receive sex education prior to the start of the sexual education. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Sexual content in the media. Since 1997, the amount of sexual content on TV has nearly doubled in the United States. Additionally, a study done in 2008 showed that nearly 40% of popular music lyrics contained sexual references which were often sexually degrading. These lyrics were also often accompanied with mentions of other risk behaviors, such as substance use and violence. Teens ages 13 to 15 in the United States use entertainment media as their top source for education in regards to sexuality and sexual health. Additionally, a study found that 15 to 19 year olds in the U.S. use media far more than parents or schools to obtain information about birth control. Some studies have found that, very few teen television shows mention any of the responsibilities or risks, e.g., using contraception, pregnancy, STIs associated with sex, and almost none of the shows with sexual content include precaution prevention, or negative outcomes as the primary theme. Television shows 16 and Pregnant and its spin-off, Teen Mom, which first aired on MTV in 2009 received major disapproval from some parents as they thought the shows glamorized teen pregnancy and motherhood. However, 16 and Pregnant actually led to a 4.3% reduction in teen pregnancy, mostly as a result of increased contraceptive use. In contrast, other data shows that exposure to high levels of sexual content on the television causes adolescents to have twice the risk of becoming pregnant in the following three years, compared to those who were exposed to low levels. The film Mean Girls, directed by Mark Waters, shed light on the state sex education in some parts of the United States. In the film, the health instructor states, At your age, you're going to have a lot of urges. You're going to want to take off your clothes and touch each other. But if you do touch each other, you will get chlamydia and die. 
This line is meant to be satirical, but it illustrates common flaws within sex education in the U.S. It depicts simplistic descriptions of sexual activity and implementation of fear without any legitimate basis. Comprehensive sex education is the main topic in the documentary The Education of Shelby Knox released in 2005 about Lubbock, Texas, which has one of the highest teen pregnancy and STD rates in the nation. The solution to which is a strict abstinence-only sex education curriculum in the public schools and a conservative preacher who urges kids to pledge abstinence until marriage. In 2013, How to Lose Your Virginity was released, a documentary that questioned the effectiveness of the abstinence-only sex education movement and observed how sexuality continues to define a young woman's morality and self-worth. The meaning and necessity of virginity as a social construct is also examined through narration and interviews with notable sexuality experts, such as former Surgeon General Dr. Joycelyn Elders, Scarletine, creator and editor Heather Corinna, historian Hannah Blank, author Jessica Valenti, and comprehensive sex education advocate Shelby Knox. Not only have films portrayed sex education, but so has social media. Platforms such as YouTube, Facebook, Vine, and others are used as a tool to uplift the narratives of marginalized communities such as persons of color and LGBTQIA persons in hopes to strengthen sexual health equity for all. As a result of the mass amount of sex content in media, Media Literacy Education MLE, has emerged. It was created to address the influence of unhealthy media messages on risky health decisions, such as intention to use substances, body image issues, and eating disorders. A study analyzed the effectiveness of a teacher-led MLE program, called Media Aware Sexual Health MASH, which provides students with accurate health information and teaches them how to apply that information to critical analysis of media messages. This comprehensive sex education resulted in increased intentions to talk to a parent, partner and medical professional prior to sexual activity, and intentions for condom use, due to knowledge gaps in most sex education curricula for teens, free online resources like Sex, etc. and Teensource.org have been created to promote comprehensive, inclusive sex education for teenagers. Topic. See also Sex education Sexual revolution Sexually transmitted infections Age of consent Sex education in the United States Abstinence-only sex education in Uganda Sex education curriculum Reproductive health Topic. Sources This article incorporates text from a free content work. Licensed under CC by SAEGO 3.0 License Statement, Emerging Evidence, Lessons and Practice in Comprehensive Sexuality Education, A Global Review 2015, 14, 15, 25, 29 UNESCO, UNESCO. UNESCO. To learn how to add open license text to Wikipedia articles, please see Wikipedia, adding open license text to Wikipedia. For information on reusing text from Wikipedia, please see the terms of use. <laughs>